Hi, I'm Mark Cunningham with Grace Property Management. We are in part four of reviewing the four new laws that the Colorado legislature just passed impacting Colorado real estate investors, Colorado property managers, Colorado landlords, and Colorado tenants. So this month, we're looking at the updated warranty of habitability law, which is HB 19-1170. Now this is a complicated, very convoluted uh, law. There are so many twists and turns in this law, so we're not going to be able to go into super detail, but we'll give you a pretty, pretty solid overview of this. We've been working with our attorney to figure this thing out because the way you read these laws are very, very complicated, but the overall view of the law is this. There's already a, a warranty of habitability law in Colorado. There already is one. And for landlords to breach the old warranty of habitability law, a couple things had to happen. Number one, an item had to be included on what was called this 505 list. Why is it called 505? I don't know. A 505 list that the legislature put out. And this 505 list contained requirements for habitability. Things like, hey, if you're going to have a property, the windows have to lock, the doors have to lock, the heat has to work. Uh, big picture things, right? The plumbing has to work. There can't be running water. Standard habitability things that if those if the property doesn't meet the 505 list, it's considered uninhabitable. And then secondly, the landlord had to fail to address within a reasonable time, and that was the legal law, a reasonable time. Why? Well, because it takes a different amount of time to fix a non-working door versus fixing an air conditioner or heating unit that doesn't work. So it's a reasonable time. That was the old law. Well, that went away now. With the new law, it changes dramatically. Under the new law, a premises could now be considered uninhabitable if an item is on the 505 list, which we already know, or if the condition that makes the premises unfit for human habitation, a lot of room for, for interpretation there, or in any condition that materially interferes with the tenant's life, health, or safety, or mold that is not remediated would interfere with the tenant's life, health, or safety. That's a lot of things, but it gets more complex because that 505 list greatly expanded. So the 505 list now says appliances have been added, meaning if the dishwasher stops working, the tenant could claim the property is uninhabitable. Now, I think that's a stretch, but that's what the law says. So appliances are in there. Functioning appliances have to conform with this law as well, as well as additional things on this new 505 list. So guidance number three is this. When a landlord receives tenant's warranty of habitability notice, so the tenant receives gives the landlord a notice of, hey, there's a warranty of habitability issue, the, the landlord has to jump through a lot of hoops in a very, very, very specific and timely. And here's a quick overview. They have to respond within 24 hours after receiving the notice, number one. The response must indicate the landlord's intent for remedying the condition. In other words, what are you going to do about it, Mr. Landlord? Number three, the landlord has to provide an estimate when the remediation will begin. And number four, provide an estimate when the remediation will be completed. Now, this just isn't practical. First of all, you've got 24 hours. That means if the tenant sends an email at 12 o'clock midnight on Saturday night, the landlord has until 12 o'clock midnight on Sunday night to email the tenant back and say, hey, here's what we're gonna do. Here's how long it's gonna take, uh, or here's when we'll start, and here's what it's gonna get done. We oftentimes as landlords have no idea when these things are gonna get done, depending on the significance of the problem. Right? If the dishwasher doesn't work, that's, we know when that's gonna get done. If it's a mold issue, as the tenant said, we don't know how long that's gonna take. Do we just need to clean a wall or do we need to replace drywall? We don't know until the mold specialist can get to the property, that doesn't matter anymore. We have now have 24 hours to tell them how long it's gonna to take to start and how long it's gonna to take to get done. Impractical, not realistic, but it's the law. Number four, if the condition is caused by the tenant or somebody associated with the tenant, then it can't be considered a breach. So if the tenant caused the damage, then this, that all this goes away from that extent. Number five, it mandates times for the landlord to commence action to avoid breaching. So, and again, here's where it gets tricky and sticky. But if, it, that, if the item is on the 505 list, we've got 96 hours to commence action. Otherwise, if it's an uninhabitable issue, we still have 96 hours. If it materially interferes with the life, health, or safety, we've got 24 hours to commence action. And if it's mold, we've got 96 hours, but it requires additional specific action. So let's look at the mold aspect. Now I know this is complicated, probably putting you to sleep, but it's important to make sure you know this stuff. As it relates to mold specific actions, you must within 96 hours mitigate the immediate risk, and this is their language, the immediate risk by installing a containment, stopping the active source of water to be mold, and installing a high efficiency particulate air filtration device to reduce the tenant's exposure to mold. That's a lot in there. This is a great law if you are a mold inspection company because now you have to go in and install all these things right off the bat. 
Additional things, you must maintain the contained unit requirement, remedial actions, until remedial actions are executed. So you've got to put what you can in there until you can start full remediation. There's more. You have to establish an appropriate protection for workers and occupants. You must eliminate or limit moisture sources and dry all the material. Decontaminate or remove damaged material as is appropriate. Evaluate whether the premises have been successfully remediated once it's done. And then reasonably uh, the premises to control the source of moisture and nutrients and therefore prevent or limit recurrence of the mold. Now that's a mouthful, isn't it? And mold companies know what this stuff means. You may not know what it means, but we've got to make sure we're abiding by this. There's a little more. Number seven, if it's a life, health, or safety scenario, the tenant has the legal right to demand that the landlord move the tenant to a couple things. Number one, a comparable unit as selected by the landlord. Number two, a hotel room as selected by the landlord. Number three, at the expense of the landlord, so no expense to the tenant. However, the tenant still has to pay rent. So if this can't get fixed and the tenant has to go to a hotel room, the landlord must provide that hotel room at the landlord's expense. But while the property is sitting there vacant, the tenant still has to pay rent during that period of time. Now the tenants also have a new right to deduct their rent to make the repairs under certain circumstances. And here it gets again very, very uh, sticky and very hard to follow this. But the tenant can potentially withhold their rent. They have to do they have to do a couple things. Number one, they have to provide a specific notice. Number two, the landlord must fail to commence the legally required remedial action. Number three, the tenant must, must then follow additional requirements, meaning the tenant must give the landlord another notice that says ten, it has to be 10 days prior to when their rent's due. And it has to say, hey, I know my rent's due in 10 days, but I'm hereby informing you that I plan on deducting from my rent the work that needs to be required to be done. The tenant's second notice, the repair of the deduct notice that, that uh, has to give additional specific requirements, it has to say this. It has to include a copy of at least one good faith estimate of the costs to repair the issue. And that estimate must be prepared by a professional who's unrelated to the tenant. So it can't be the tenant's brother who happens to be a plumber. It has to be a professional and that, that uh, bid has to be submitted along with this other documentation from the tenant. If the tenant is attempting to withhold their rent. Don't worry, it gets more complicated. Because after the landlord receives that 10-day notice to repair or deduct, the landlord has four days now to respond with its own estimate. If the landlord fails to respond within four days, the tenant then can proceed to deduct the rent until the entire amount of the estimate is deducted. If the tenant uh, repairs, they have to use a professional. They can't do it themselves and just bill for their time. Now, if the tenant is deducting rent based upon a malfunctioning appliance specifically, it gets more complicated because they don't have to repair it. They can just go buy a new appliance and deduct the entire cost of the appliance. They don't have to repair it. They have the option of purchasing a new appliance. Why? as the law says. Number nine, tenants have no right to deduct or repair in subsidized properties. So if the tenant is living in a subsidized property, think housing, assistance, or any government housing, this doesn't apply. They cannot withhold rent. The warranty of habitability rules still apply, but they can't withhold rent. Now the tenants have more rights as well. So if the tenant still isn't happy, the tenant has the right to terminate the lease agreement. If it's a non-appliance issue, so remember appliances or setting aside for a minute. So if the warranty of habitability is non-appliance related, the tenant can terminate within 14 days notice for breach of the same condition within six months. If the issue is repeating itself, they can, they can do that. If it's an appliance issue, they can terminate with 14 day notice for uh, continued issues within the same six month period, but only if the landlord, uh, but not if, the, not if the landlord has fixed the appliance within 14 days, then the tenant cannot terminate. This is extremely complicated. If, you're, if you are thinking that, then you're right, because it is. It's gonna be really hard to navigate this stuff. The landlord may not retaliate or against the tenant. This is part of the law as well. It says, hey, landlord, if you retaliate, now what is retaliation? That's, I don't even know. I mean, how are you gonna retaliate? Refuse to fix it maybe? I don't, I don't know how a landlord would retaliate against a tenant, but if the landlord does retaliate, then the tenant may terminate the lease uh, based on their retaliation claim, whatever that would be, they could potentially be awarded up to three times the amount of the rent or three times the tenant's actual damages plus attorney fees. So don't retaliate, Mr. Landlord, if your tenant is claiming a warranty of habitability. One more aspect on this, then you can turn this off and go get yourself something to drink. Other warranty of habitability requirements. The landlord must provide the tenant a copy of the lease 
written if requested. Now, these things have nothing to do with what we just talked about. These are not habitability issues at, at all, but these are just things that the legislature added in to the bill as it relates to the relationship between the property management company and the landlord. And it says the landlord must give the tenant a copy of their lease, which that's standard. Of, of course, landlord should be doing that. Number two, it requires the lease to include a specific statement indicating the name and the address of the person who is the landlord or the landlord's authorized agent, which is, again, that should be standard. That should be in the lease anyway. Number three, that it must provide written notice to the tenant within one business day, 24 business hours, one business day, if the landlord or authorized agent changes. So if you work with a different property management company, if you sell your property while the tenant's in place, you have 24 hours to give notification to the tenant or else you could be in breach of the warranty of habitability. Whew, that's a lot of stuff. That is very complicated. It's rocking the industry in the state of Colorado. It's shifting things around in a big way. It's hard for attorneys. It's hard for judges to get a handle on this. We're doing our best for our clients. If you're a client of Grace Property Management, don't worry. We got you covered. We're going to keep you protected with this stuff. But this is why it's so important as a property management company or as a landlord to treat your customers well, treat your tenants well. They're, they need to be protected. We want to be fair. We want to be accurate with our tenants, with our landlords, to ensure that we are conforming to the warranty of habitability. If you've got questions, give our office a call. We're happy to help anytime.